People were beyond excited to watch the full swing Netflix series about the PGA Tour and all four of the men's golf majors, and it mostly delivered. This video will contain some spoilers, so stop watching if you wish to avoid them. People became obsessed with F1 Drive to Survive and considered themselves proper F1 fans who watched the races, qualifying, listened to F1 podcasts, read about F1, and follow F1 drivers, teams, and accounts on social media. The series grew the sport to levels and new fan bases it previously couldn't reach, and people were hoping that Full Swing can do the same. If it's even as half as successful as Drive to Survive, it will surely be a huge thing for the game. The series starts out fairly innocuously with Jordan Spieth and Justin Thomas's rivalry, perhaps over-egged in Episode 1, Frenemies, but it's a great focus on JT and a look into his relationship with his coach and father. Thomas struggles during the week of the PGA with allergies and a poor Saturday, but builds an incredible seven-shot comeback on the final day to win major number two. His mindset and self-belief is seriously impressive, and it goes to show just how confident and ruthless you need to be to be one of the world's best at your chosen profession. We also get a good look at his and Spieth's friendship, and here's some good stuff from Ricky Fowler, too. Episode 2, titled Win or Go Home, is Brooke Kopka's turn, and Vox Media and Box to Box frame him very well against Scotty Scheffler, who is basically turning into Brooks Kopka Mark II, winning everything and raising to the top of the world's rankings. It's a great look inside the mind of Brooks, and even for me, a surprise to see just how much he cares about the game. He is struggling with a real crisis of confidence, and it makes his move to LIV seem, on one hand, fairly obvious with all the injuries and loss of form, but on the other, also very disappointing, as he was clearly desperate to get to the top of the game again. It's clear that the major means everything, like literally everything to him, so perhaps the fact that he can still play in them is why he ultimately took the money. Ian Poulter stars in episode 3, titled Money or Legacy, a genuine bloke who is brilliant at golf and unafraid to say what he thinks. Non-golfers and people who don't follow the game will really warm to Poult, who is shown to be a proper family man who is becoming increasingly frustrated with his struggles to mix it with the young guns. Money or Legacy is the title of the episode, and we all know he chose money. People ask all the time, don't you have enough already? But that's all relative, he said. We thought that was a really good quote because he looks to have more money than he could ever spend with two glorious mansions on either side of the Atlantic. But then we've never been offered 30 million, Bolters reported LIV Golfie, to do anything, let alone play golf on some of the world's best courses. He'll likely never feature in the Ryder Cup again, which is remarkably sad. Episode 4, Imposter Syndrome, focuses on Joel Dahman, and he comes across incredibly, well, yet self-deprecating. Number 5, American Dreams, follows Matt Fitzpatrick and Dustin Johnson. Fitzpatrick's story is excellent, and he clearly works incredibly hard on his fitness, distance, stats keeping, and his general golf game due to him being fairly small and a bit of an underdog. Netflix really paints the enormity of his U.S. Open win well, and there's certainly some goosebump moments as it builds towards his victory. DJ shares the episode, and we think people would have loved to see more, perhaps a few home visits, car journeys, and just more of him. A lot of them have become a massive DJ fan in recent years, and really miss watching him winning PGA Tour events and playing against the likes of Rory McIlroy. His quote on why he joined LIV was one of my favorites of the series. For me, it was playing less, making more money. Pretty simple. Someone offers anyone a job doing the same thing they're already doing, but less time at the office, and they're going to pay them more. Pretty sure you're going to take it, and something's wrong with you if you didn't. Episode 6, Don't Get Bitter, Get Better, is Tony Finau's episode, which also features some of Colin Morikawa. This is hands down the top rated episode of the series. Finau is so down to earth, an amazing family man, and someone who has been through real tragedy. He comes out with beautiful quote after beautiful quote, and his rise from near poverty to the multi-millions of the PGA Tour is incredibly impressive. Seven was another really good episode. Golf is hard, involving Mito Pereira and his PGA Championship collapse. 
and Sahith Thigala's Phoenix Open near miss in a rookies episode. Mito going, I effed it on the last hole after that drive into the creek was agonizing and it was hard to watch with his wife Antonia devastated and his caddy's wife in tears following his double bogey finish. Thigala was also in tears, which we saw at the time, after his Phoenix Open disappointment despite winning a paycheck of over $400,000 still early on in his rookie season. It really went to show that these guys are competitors first and businessmen second. Thigala's father Murley gets some time too and his care for his son and how much he has put into helping him reach the PGA Tour is very heartwarming. We also get to see the strong Latino slash Spanish speaking fraternity on the PGA Tour and the close relationship Pereira and Joaquin Neiman share. It's like they really care for each other and seems like great fun to be a part of. They're mostly Neiman and Sir Ortiz and Garcia and maybe Pereira and Munoz too according to reports with LIV Golf now but that wasn't really touched upon. It's easy to see why they all joined LIV, they're like a family. The final episode everything had led to this follows Rory McIlroy who allowed the Netflix cameras in for a month. They get the enormity of the 150th open cross well and Rory's sad third place finish and then include Cameron Smith's awkward press conference and when he failed to deny the LIV rumors. It ends up at East Lake where we see some cool behind the scenes footage including McIlroy shouting F you Phil and he also reveals at the end that Tiger Woods is always the first to text him after a win with the message usually coming before the winning putt is sunk. It's a great finish to the season and a series that is a must see TV. Here's to season 2, hopefully that gets commissioned. That was all from us today folks, for more similar content make sure to subscribe to the channel, see you in the next one.